there's so much more to music than just putting a freestyle down, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a whole like structure you can do to a song. It's really insane. And I feel like if the underground started picking up on that, like not even, they don't even have to change the genre, you know? Mm -hmm. Like they could still do plug and be or, you know, whatever, but if they added in other elements, you know, like I think it would be crazy to see that happen. Yo, what's going on guys? You're watching Kids Take Over right now. Vancouver all the way to New York. And I'm with an artist that, bro, you guys have been just like killing me to do this interview. Um, I don't want to mispronounce your name though. Is it Weiland or Weiland? I mean, it's either or, but the way I say it is Weiland. Weiland, right, yeah. That's, that's what I thought too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, how, how's your day been today? I know you like you moved to New York recently and like you're living in Brooklyn, right? Right. It's uh, New York's been nice. Um, my day has been all right. Just got back from Florida. I had to go there real quick, but uh, other than that, you know, it's been relaxing. What was the quick trip to Florida about? Um, just some family issues going okay, on. I feel that. Yeah. No, I feel that. I feel that. What part of Florida are you from? Because I, I went there for Rolling Wild, and like, it's not that I didn't like it, but yeah. I wasn't feeling Florida. Really? Me. Yeah. Why, why didn't you like it? What did I like about it? I just didn't like that. It just felt really like gross. Uh, I can, yeah, I can see why you feel that. I'm from Tampa. Tampa, okay. Tampa, Florida. Do you prefer the suburban side of things or more so like city-like? Um, after living here for six months, definitely I prefer city. Yeah. I think as I get older, like I'll probably like suburban more though. Yeah, I feel that when you help the family and whatnot, yeah, right? Yeah, to be more calm. Mm. Well, well, bro, I'm glad you decided to do this interview with us because like, you you actually don't talk a lot, I feel like. You just don't talk publicly on interviews. Yeah. Um, I just, I've been watching your guys' interviews recently and I just like what you guys are doing, honestly, Hell. so. Hell yeah. I feel like, you know, you went through like different phases in your musical career, mm -hmm. right? So I wanna know how about how it started from like the very beginning though. You know what I'm saying? Like, you grew up in, in Florida, but how did you start getting buzz and like what type of music were you making in the, the beginning? Um, well, in the beginning, I'd describe it as like plug. Yeah. And then slowly over time when uh, I met this producer Zang Gang, it like it turned into like a plug with a R and B touch. Okay, yeah, yeah. Kinda, you know. Yeah. Got more like singy instead of rappy. I'm curious, like when you were making the older music, right? Which mm -hmm. your fans kinda classified as like the pack runner yeah. wildland, right? Yeah. So like who were you listening to around that time that made you want to make that type of music? I, I definitely feel like Chief Keef had to yeah. do it. You're right, spot on. Chief Keef, um, SD, uh, you know, just the whole Glow Gang era mm -hmm. of music really inspired that, I'd say. Right, right. Mainly. What about the time when you, like, dropped your, your it was like a self-titled project after that, right? Mm -hmm. You think, like, that album was kind of different from the Pack Runner stuff, or do you think it was kind of still in, like, the same lane? I'd say it's definitely different from the Pack Runner stuff because, uh, I mean, I kind of, I feel like I showcased a little bit more versatility in a way. Mm -hmm. you know, it was like, it was almost me trying to progress into the style I am now. Mm -hmm. But not fully Pretty, there. Yeah, not fully there, I'd mm -hmm. say, probably. What kind of like person were you around the time when you were making like Pack Runner stuff? Because like, I feel like you, you seem like a different person now, you know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, when I was making the Pack Runner stuff, I was just a crazy 16 year old taking Xanax all the time, you know, mm -hmm. really. It's really all I was. What about uh, making music with people? Because I know like you used to make music with like Summers and mm -hmm. Autumn and like all those guys, right? Um, you know, is that kind of who, who you were like hanging around at the time? Were they like your best friends? Like Oh yeah, around that or, time, um, yeah. yeah. I definitely associated with them. Um, I still love them to this day, but right. I feel like we kind of like took our own paths in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I think life was better. Well, not be Well, I don't know. You're just younger at that time and like, I feel like you have less responsibilities yeah. and I don't know. Like, so of course, I think life seemed better at that time. But uh, I also liked how at that time, everybody in like that underground area was more focused on, it seemed like everybody was more focused on music and having good times. But I feel like now it's really like, who's better than who, you know, everybody's trying to like top each other, you know? Like I feel like everybody has like beefs with each other. Yeah. Like, low key, you know, it's weird. It's turned really weird in a way. Yeah. Now you make a good point, man, because because I, I have TikTok and I feel like every 
every other day I'll see like a new beef or something, right? And it's true, there's a lot of like competition, like, oh, is he, his summer's better than him or whatever, and it's just yeah. like. I think competition's good though, because it, you know, it'll drive you to want to do better, but it should be like a friendly competition, you know? Right. Like you're pushing each other in a way. Do you kind of regret like the life you kind of lived back then, like living so lavishly and stuff, or do you think it just kind of like, you know, um, made you? I'm glad I did it, because it was an experience, uh -huh. you know? But uh, I think a lot of it, like, the brandishing weapons and stuff was like just <laughs> immaturity and just you know I don't know yeah. I was just living crazy yeah I don't know I, I just mean, had a different goal as well yeah you know? wait what was your goal back then um really I just wanted to um my goal was to just really get like a one hit wonder song mm. like do a bunch of like this crazy I just had this tactic of like doing crazy marketing you know flooding the internet like I would I would reach out to Instagram pages that had like big followings like rap pages and stuff like that yeah. and I'd have them post like you know like I did the the titty thing one time the auto tune in my neck yeah I remember that yeah. take out my vocal cords replaced with auto tune tap on this tooth five times Woo! Woo! things like that because um, it would drive people to come to your page they they'd be like. You know, like, what is this? Is this real? They'd come to you, then they'd stream, you know? Like, yeah. I don't know. It was just a, a tactic. But I feel like now, like, I don't know. I just want to take things more seriously. Mm. But also a lot of it has to do with, like, I, I listen to a lot of Kanye and, like, uh, Daft Punk. Yeah. And I'd always listen to their music and be like, like, I would never be able to make this type of stuff, you know? I want to make it, I want to make stuff like this, but I'd never be able to, but... Um, were you thinking this when you were making the older stuff? Yeah, oh, sure. yeah, for a long time, but in reality, you know, it's... Their music's simple, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel like simple is better. And then I also ran into a new producer, which, like, he, he, was, he was, like, the first producer I've ever met mm -hmm. that was really open to being more creative, trying new things. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one big part of, like, me being able to do what I want to do now. That's fish, no? Yeah, fish. It's fish. crazy. Fish is in our Discord. And like, I didn't even know who he was for the longest time. Really? Because he would just like, you know, say mess he would have like messages in there. And then this one dude came in and he's like, yo, you guys know who Prod Fish is? Like this yeah. guy's like a fucking legend. He does wild and stuff. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, no, he has so much potential, bro. Like, yeah. I, I really believe in him a lot. How'd you meet him? Um. I really don't even remember now that I think about it. I think it was just on so. Oh, no, no, no. It was a long time ago. Actually, this was in like 2018. Okay. He sent me a pack of beats in my email. And uh, it was all like electronic dance beats. Mm. And so, like, I kept talking to him from there on out. And like, we, we worked behind the scenes. Like, mm. I never dropped a song by him. And like, I don't know, just the sound really progressed one day and I was like, damn, all right, like I really fuck with this guy. So mm. I flew him out to LA and mm. then we began working on uh, the project I'm working on now, Vices. Mm. And then, I don't know, just really went up from there. Do you feel like the music you were making back then, do you think there was kind of like a ceiling to it by, by any chance? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I definitely think so. It's, very, it's a very limited sound, you know? And I, I think that's why I got so tired of it, you know? Because I was, I don't know, I was just, that plug and B sound, I had, I've been doing that stuff since like 2015, 2016, you know, mm -hmm. so just, it got kind of old after a while. I just wanted to try new things. I feel that. I, I sometimes like, people ask me about like my older videos and stuff, right? And I don't mm -hmm. know if it's like the same for you, but like in a sense, I'll kind of cringe. The stuff isn't even bad, but it's just like when you look back at a younger version of yourself. Yeah, it's, it's always, it always doesn't look good to you, you know? Yeah. Do you ever listen to, to your older music? Um, Still? Every now and then just to reminisce. Yeah. Know? Because, honestly, I feel like it was, like, for the time, it was pretty crazy. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I'm a huge fan of, like, psychedelic music. I don't know if you could consider, like, like yeah, Travis Scott, ASAP Rocky, um, yeah. Pierre Bourne, in a sense, mm -hmm. too, in a sense. Yeah. Um, it's just, like, in my opinion, like, hearing that type of music, it's, it's so out the box, and you can do so much more with it. Yeah, there's, like, way more possibilities, you know? You can take it in any direction, you know? And you can also, it's easier to mix other genres into it, you know? Mm. Like, if you wanted, like, a saxophone, there's ways to incorporate that. Like, I don't mm. know, just, there really are. Like you said, there's a lot of possibilities with it. So, okay, your current sound right now, right? Mm -hmm. How would you say you formed it? If you can name, like, a couple things. Like, it doesn't even have to be music. Postmodernism, definitely. Like being able to 
take other people's ideas and create something new out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, hmm. I don't know, just inspiration from just getting inspiration from things, really. That's mm -hmm. really all it is. What kind of things? Because uh, in my mind, the f one of the things that pops up is like Tame Impala. I feel like I could. Oh, like who are my inspirations yeah, yeah, for yeah. this new sound? Yeah. Um, definitely Tame Impala is one of them, but mainly I'd say like right now, yeah. like biggest inspirations for my sound is Kanye West, mm -hmm. um, Emojin Heap, she's like a female singer, Okay. Uh, Daft Punk, and a little bit of Aphex Twin. Gotcha. Did you, what did you think of, uh, of Donda, like the album and then also the rollout? Um, I thought the rollout was insane, yeah. I thought it was fire. Um, the music though, I thought it was great because uh, there wasn't a lot of drums, I felt like. I really liked that. It was more like chords, you mm -hmm. know, like singing over chords. I really liked that. Mm -hmm. what's, like your, what's like your top three most listened to songs on Donda? Probably the one where uh, Casey yeah. sings at the beginning. Well, it got changed now. I forgot yeah. what the name of that song was. But Keep that's My the Spirit one, Alive. Yeah, that's the one I've listened to the most, definitely. Casey is sick, and I feel like you guys would just have such good synergy, bro. Yeah, no, he's very far. No, nah, for real, for real. Um, if, if he's in New York, I would love to make the connect just so you guys can just get in the studio or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd, that'd be really be cool, cool, yeah. I want to talk about Heartstop because I think that by far to me is your best song. Thank you, man. Yeah. I really appreciate that. If I'm just being honest, I think it was my one of the favorite releases this year. And like, if someone told me like, yo, Kanye like produced this, yeah. I wouldn't even like, I'd be like, oh, okay, I believe that. I mean, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. That's very far, man. I want to know about like how you actually made that song exactly and like just like the reaction you thought you got from it um well uh to make it at the time i was listening to a lot of uh i was listening to timbaland shock value album okay. with justin timberlake classic i had that on like repeat like that whole album yeah and uh also fish had it on repeat as well we were both listening to it at the same that we like to do that a lot like when we're making a song, we'll find like a reference or like a, a good album, just listen to it over and over, okay. take inspiration from it. And uh, yeah, that's really how it came about. We just, we use Discord a lot. Oh yeah. To like make beats and shit, you know, we'll like produce something together and stuff like that. And that's what we did. That's yeah. how we made the instrumental for that. There's so many like different parts of the song. Like it's not just like, oh, there's a verse and chorus. I feel like there's so much time that went into it. Oh yeah, there's so many, there's like, I think there's like 16 versions of that song. Really? Yeah, there was a lot of versions. They had like a, there was a bridge that Mike Dean played. Mike Dean? Yeah. Uh, it's actually on the demo version. Sheesh, okay. okay. Well, that being said, right, how do you think your audience grew to kind of like your newer music versus your old? Because like, it's hard to make them transition to that, right? Yeah, it's no, like definitely. if we randomly started posting like super like lyrical, lyrical artists, right? Like really mm -hmm. lyrical. You know, I think it's possible, don't get me wrong, but yeah. it, would, it would be a little bit weird to transition them into it. Yeah, no, that's understandable. Um, I just feel like my fan base is super loyal. Pro I think that's why you yeah. know, it's working in a way, definitely. And I don't know, I just feel like the newer sound is more, it's more genuine. And uh, I feel like people are able to see that and, you know, like there's a bigger audience that is able to listen to my newer music right. versus my old music. I feel like you can, you can maintain your older audience, but now you're actually able to get like right. in your audience. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't lie, there's this one leak I listened, and, and I hate telling artists I listen to their leaks, but like, oh, I, no, I don't care about you don't give a shit, yeah. This is a leak with you and Yeet. I don't know if that's gonna be on Vices, but. Oh, uh, Temptation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, since it leaked it, it probably won't be on Vices to be honest. Really? Nice. Yeah. Damn, bro. Well, it's, it was really cool because I feel like you brought a different side out of Yeet that like, you wouldn't, we wouldn't normally hear, you know? Mm -hmm. that's, that's really what I plan to do on this project. So, like, I don't want to say too much, but, you know. Like, I, I feel that. I mean, what's, what's your relationship like with, with Yeet now? Do you guys talk? Do you guys bounce ideas off each other or just, like, make music? Um, I actually haven't spoke. I spoke to Yeet recently. Um, we were gonna work on some stuff, but uh, ever since he's gotten like, you know, very big recently, you Damn. know, he's been busy, we, you know, yeah. kinda trailed off from communicating and all that. Dang, well, I, I hope you guys do do some more stuff because I think he is just has like the underground unlock, but then oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. But then also he, he, you know, I think he's going to become mainstream kind of soon. You know definitely, definitely. Yeah. Bro, I've seen that from the start. I mean, um, I remember, like, he's the only person. Yeah, he is. He's the only person I've ever given, like, my engineering to. When I first met him in uh, New York, this is when I came here to meet uh, Stephen Victor. Okay. And uh, that's the first time I met Yeet in person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember he he used to have a pro he wouldn't record as much because he didn't like. Well, I know like some people their recording process is they like to hear themselves with all the effects on while they're recording. Mm -hmm. I'm that type of person too, but he he likes that as well. And uh, I remember he wouldn't record because like I don't know, there was just no like engineer that could do that you know in a way and. Uh, I took his computer and I like put everything that I, I use on there and I just told him like which things to adjust, you know, for ad libs and stuff like that. And uh, he ended up, you know, recording more. You yeah, know? that's so crazy. I think that was a good thing. No, that's, that's really cool. What, what was he kind of like back then around that time? Like, just like the type of person he is, like, did you guys have a good relationship? Like, oh yeah, bro, yeah. I, I love him, man. He's awesome. Yeah. It's really cool. No, that's what's up. Uh, what did you think of his... Uh, newest project he had uh, up to me I actually I only listened to like half the album I didn't okay. get to hear the whole thing but uh, from what I heard though really good yeah and his sound is really like evolving in a way you yeah. know versus like what his like two projects ago you know definitely has evolved over time right and and just his you know what I like about Yeet is that like well one his beat selection is amazing because like Phil yeah. is doing his shit like, yeah. it's really dope but like when you think the song is just like becoming repetitive it's not because yeah. he'll do something in the back like you'll make some weird noise yeah right you know what i'm saying so i fuck no, with that but, but i want to know this i feel like you know and people have even said this like publicly like like you have inspired a lot of people as well you know uh in the underground especially so like have you seen like you know how you've inspired people like through other songs you've heard definitely um from just the music that's like trending on tiktok and stuff like that i think there's definitely you know, like a lot of people might not notice it just because they don't know of me, probably. But mm -hmm. I think I can definitely see it sometimes. You know. How so? Like, like sonically, like how do you think? Um, just like the way the singing is, and also the production style. You know, I hear a lot of plug and B sometimes. It mm -hmm. really sounds like Zangang, but mm -hmm. it's not Zangang that produced it. You know, I feel like Zangang doesn't get a lot of credit as well. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Like for the. The plug and be sound that's really big right now. Right. No, no, I feel that. I think I think it's both both, you know, mm -hmm. you as well. Um, who do you still talk to from the underground scene right now? Just curious. Um Summers and Yeet every now and then. Other than that though, I don't really talk to anybody else from the underground feel, scene. I feel like you're just so busy in your own world that like yeah. you don't even get time to like see what's going on with yeah, else. and there's a few, like, I feel like there's one-sided, um, like, hate between me and some people. Like, right. not, I'm, I don't have anything against anybody, but I don't know. I feel like there's just, I don't know. Yeah. There's just tension between me and some people. But also, I feel like fans fans will do a lot of that stuff, too. It's not Yeah, even it like, is probably, you know, you know them sometimes, you know, trolls and stuff like that yeah. on the internet. That's why I really don't like the internet and social media. I feel that. I feel that, man. Unfortunately, it's like my job to be on the internet. Yeah, but sometimes, exactly. Yeah. Know, sometimes it's like, damn, I wish I didn't have to make this mm -hmm. story or just because of the algorithm, you know? Exactly, man. Algorithm runs us all right now. It's sad, but it's kind of true, you know? Yeah. Um, but yo, you mentioned Mike Dean, and I, and I had to ask you about this. So, like, you know, in what point of your life did you, did you meet Mike Dean and start working with him? Um, Steven Victor actually connected me with him. That and makes sense. Because he manages Pusha T as well, right? Yeah, and they were I think close. so. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah, but uh, I met Mike Dean in the beginning of 2020, and Stephen put that together. Uh, he had originally sent some of my newer songs over, some demos I had, and Mike fucked with them. So he invited me out to LA, yeah. and uh, I went to his crib, and uh, we just worked on some shit. Like, well, you know, what what was some of your favorite work that Mike Dean has done before you even worked with him? Um. My favorite Mike Dean work ever was the guitar solo on Hold My Liquor. Jeez, I was just into that on the that, subway. That's amazing, bro. Shit's insane. 
bro. I, I was literally, it's funny you say that. I was just listening to Jesus, and I'm like, yeah. and that's just one of the many things. But man, what were you kind of like geeked out when you when you actually met him in person? Oh yeah, bro. Oh my god. Yeah, and I don't I don't usually smoke weed, but you know, since I was meeting my dean, I had to smoke. You yeah. know, you have to. And yeah. uh, and I don't I don't take weed well sometimes, so I was in there just. <laughs> trying all my composure, you know, I'm in here hearing him play all these synths, they sound amazing, you know. Yeah. I'm listening to the guy that I listened to as a kid, you know, produced for Kanye, and I'm in here working with him, you know. Yeah. He will put together a hit song in like two seconds. Mm -hmm. It's like drinking water for him, I feel like. Like to see the process, him do his process, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's really, like he'll just, I feel like in his head, he hears like, okay, this synth is going to work with this synth, goes over there, plays that. But it just starts combining all these layers, you know, it just makes this body of music. It's crazy, really. Yeah, okay, okay. What's, uh, so it's called Vices, right? Mm -hmm. I know you want to, don't want to reveal like a crazy amount, right? But right. just, you know, just give us like a bit, like what do you, like what do you think it's, it's kind of sounding like? And, like? It's just, my goal with this album is to really like um, go against like what's popular and stuff like that in a way. Yeah. But also, um, I hope that when I release the project, it causes like a domino effect in the underground scene. Mm -hmm. and hopefully it causes people to um, start borrowing elements from things and merging things, you know? I hope it creates like a trend of people doing that. Definitely mm -hmm. doing like structured music and stuff like that. Man, I've never heard anyone say that. Yeah, um, I hope so. I hope mm -hmm. once you put it out that that happens yeah. because, you know, I, I think it makes sense for some people to just, you know, go in the booth and like freestyle something and like put it out like right. shortly after. but. There is something to just, you know, sitting down and, and writing and, mm -hmm. and thinking like, okay, I made this song, but maybe it doesn't have to come out right now. Maybe I could yeah. do three versions of it. Exactly. You can just do as many versions as possible. And also, like, there's so much more to music than just putting a freestyle down, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a whole, like, structure you can do to a song. It's really insane mm -hmm. what you can do with it. And I feel like if the underground started picking up on that, like, not even, they don't even have to change the genre, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they could still do plug and be or you know whatever but if they added in other elements you know like i think it'd be crazy to see that happen mm -hmm. and also like i feel like a lot of people don't realize that like along with that song you can create a whole universe around it you know like you can do visuals for it like mm -hmm. you can literally create a whole world around that song there's yeah. cover art you know like yeah. that's important there's just so much more than like what you're hearing but also what you're seeing i feel like that's true but honestly like i don't think that you've done many music videos the reason I ha I've been wanting to do music videos forever. There will definitely be uh, music videos for this project, yeah. just because like I've been wanting to do them. I especially want to do them for this because I just have crazy ideas. But for the most part, usually my ideas are like beyond the budget. They're usually like so crazy, mm, it's beyond the budget. Yeah. So I've kind of got to tone it down a bit, you know. And yeah. I think simple, simple is better. So yeah. I'm gonna try to make it you know just tasteful, simple. Have you found any like cool directors that you would want to work with? You think? Yeah, that's what I have trouble with too. You know, yeah. I'm trying to source out like who would I want to work with on the music video. You know, yeah. who would I want to direct? Who do I want to do cinematography? Mm. You know, because I don't really want just like a camera and just go next to a car and take a music video. You know, I want to I, honestly, I want to shoot like every music video on film. Right. Possibly. Yeah, you know what? Super sixteen. Yeah. Oh no, for sure, bro. I think I think that would be hard, but it's also difficult because like when you're when you're still coming up, right? Yeah. You don't have all the funds to do like a crazy music exactly. video. Exactly. Exactly. But then again, like you do it. Let's say you had a certain amount of money. If mm -hmm. you made that investment to do that, that could like your career could like skyrocket off that one video of being Definitely. so different. But it's yeah. a risk, you know. Yeah. No, it's the, everything's a risk, honestly. Yeah. But um. Yeah, there's just like a, there's like restriction, like in my deal, there's restrictions to mm. how much I can spend on a video. Mm. And it's like such a very bad limit. Right. Like it really sucks. Nah, man, that's, that's kind of whack. Well, I, I hope yeah. you, you figure it out because I don't think like what's the music you make, mm -hmm. there can be a video where you're just standing in front of a car. It just doesn't correlate. Yeah, right. Okay. Definitely. Um, what, why did you take um, a bit of like a hiatus though, like when you were transitioning into this new sound? Like, um... I don't know, I was mostly having like a lot of personal issues, you know, mm -hmm. just in life in general, just going through a lot. And also just, uh, I don't know, I just wanted to stay away. I just wanted to take a break from like the internet and just uh, focus on music, you know, really mm -hmm. develop and stuff, you know, come and then come back and show people what I've done during mm -hmm. that hiatus, basically. That's the best way to go about it. But like, what type of stuff did you do to kind of get over those personal issues that, that weren't music, like, you know? 
Um, really just like vacation, seeing new things. And uh, I really like films. And uh, also while we're recording, I like looking at uh, pictures, like photo books. Oh, okay. That probably has nothing to do with what I was saying. But yeah. yeah. Now that's cool. Where'd, where'd you go to vacation to like? Um, I went to uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. Which, there's like a very gloomy vibe to it, but I don't know. For some reason, it like, I don't know. It just feels kind of like a movie. Really? Damn, I yeah. thought you were going to say like, I went to Hawaii or something. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. You should play this game. It's called, have you heard of GeoGuessr? No. Bro, it's actually really fun if, you, if you're into just like exploring new things. It's not in person, but you just, just go on your computer, search up GeoGuessr, and then it will like drop you in a random location in like America, right? And then you have to like oh. use clues within like 30 seconds yeah. to find out where exactly you are. What? So it's like on the GPS maps basically? Yes, it's like Google like Maps. Google, yeah. Oh, that's really fire. Yeah. That so sounds you, crazy. You can use the street view to like move and like look at signs and what language is this in. And yeah. Oh, you have to like solve where it is. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah. I'm curious about this. I, I, I remember, I think I saw this or I saw a screenshot where like Pop Smoke was in your comments at, at one point. He was? I swear, bro. Pop Smoke commented on one of your posts. Whoa, I didn't, I didn't even know that. You didn't know that? No, that's crazy. Damn. Well, I feel like I feel like maybe Stephen Victor showed him because oh yeah, because he worked, he like managed him, look, he right. I think he was signed. He was signed to Victor Victor. Okay. I think he had a deal like uh, I think it was Victor Victor and Republic Records, I believe. Right, right, yeah. right. Okay, no, well, that's crazy. How do you not see the Pop Smoke? Comic? I didn't even know that. That's insane. Damn. I only met him one time. Oh, you met Pop Smoke? Yeah, just for like. Two seconds, just you know, dapped him up, said, "Hey, hey, how you doing?" You know, he's basically like welcomed me right. to the label in a way. Gotcha, gotcha. Was that like in, in New York? I'm guessing. Yeah, was it the uh, was it the Universal office? Universal office. Okay, gotcha. I think. Um, also, I want to say this. I feel like when you see like your streams and your followers, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't equate to like a really established artist. Like, okay, let me throw a name out. Like, um, like ASAP Ferg, right? Mm -hmm. But let's say ASAP Ferg has like 4 million followers, right? Yeah. I feel like the fan bases, like yours are so much more, you're just so much more loyal than his, right? And they'll just ride for you way harder than his. Yeah, that's why I love my fans, man. They're like just too loyal, like insanely loyal. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like they're, like even when we asked a question, right? We're like, yo, what do you want us to ask Wylan? Like, I, sh I texted you, right? There was, there was, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, there yeah. was that one <laughs> disturbing one, you know? Yeah. But they're they're crazy. Like you know, how do you how do you feel about your about your fans like today? Um, I definitely I love them. You know, mm -hmm. but I just hope I don't know. I share. I feel like I still might share some similar fan bases from like people I used to associate with during like the plug and be era. Mm -hmm. And that fan base was like toxic, like super toxic in a way. I do kind of want to get away from that in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't really like the, the toxic fan base in a way. Like, even though, like, they support me, you know, I love them. But mm -hmm. hopefully I do, you know, I don't know, like, they listen to my music, watch what I'm doing, and kind of get away from being toxic, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that could be but, a goal with this project, is to turn yeah, the toxic fans that is, into... <laughs> that honestly is kind of the goal in a way, I guess. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up. But I mean, um, I, I, like, some of them asked like, some really good questions, and, like, I didn't get to fit it in, but... I was like, yo, let me take like four questions from the fans and just yeah. ask you, okay? Right. So um, don't worry, they're nothing like too crazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the first one was, um, does Wylan like hijabi girls? All girls. Respect. Do bro. not discriminate with women. Respect, respect, respect. All right, well, that answers that. Um, the second question was, what's your relationship now with Chief Keith? Um, I haven't spoke since the... Uh, the feature. The song, yeah. Mm, okay. The third one was, was where does Wylan buy his clothes? I can't reveal that, man. Yeah. It's a secret. Okay, okay. Well, well, at least, at least, like, you know, where do you get the inspiration to style yourself? Because it's like, you know, I feel like inspiration? pretty swagged up. Um, Postmodern. Yeah. Anti-fashion. You know, the fans got their answers, so I'm happy. But, um, hey, man, I appreciate it. And uh, obviously, like, you know, I, I want to ask, like, is there... You don't have to give me an exact date, but yeah. like, do you feel like you're approaching the time when the album's actually gonna come out or are you still working on it? Um, right now I'm still working on it. I'm, I'm hoping for December. You know, I'd December, like, Yeah, okay. I'd like to do December because I just feel like the, the cold weather is just perfect for like the mood of the project. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I do have a single dropping uh, the 26th of this month. But oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. It's called Blaming Myself. Was there a, a, a leak or a snippet of that out? Or Oh, yeah. No, there was a... I teased a snippet of that, but yeah. uh, it's produced by Mike Dean and shit. Fish. Let's so, go. Yeah, it's going to be fire. Hoping to hear some, like, crazy outro or, like, some shit like that. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. No, I'm hype. I'm hype. And then the full project, you said December, right? That's, that's pretty soon. I feel like when an artist says a month, it ends up being like two months later. Yeah, I, I know that usually happens. Like my release dates get delayed a lot, but uh, I kind of have things under control now. You know, everything's sorted out and stuff. So That's what's up. December should be a possibility, hopefully. Hey man, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you, man. Hell yeah, this is Kids Take Over. You guys are watching. Wild. Yo, that interview was a long time coming, man. The amount of DMs I got to do that, but I did it. So if you enjoyed it, be one of those cool people who actually hit subscribe. The button should be right here somewhere. Uh, follow us on Instagram at Kids Take Over. And yeah, man, next week next week's interview is gonna be really sick too. So look out for that. And if you like the questions I asked to while in this one, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna read through all the comments, and I just want to talk to you guys. So yeah, do that. Buy some merch in the bio. Join our Discord. 